Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, that is the title of the talk. Uh, in other words, doing this forever. Uh, and if you notice, it's plural, so there will be more than once of this. Uh, yes. Because, because yes. Anyway. Okay, so uh, just to explain, uh, give you an idea of what we're going to talk about later. So, well, later now. Um, Ruby constants first, we need an idea of what Ruby constants are. And then we talk about how they'll be loaded and what Rails has to do with all this stuff. So, before we start properly, I'll tell a story, a very short story, about why I even looked into this. Okay, it's a very short story. There's a story. Uh, has anyone ever seen this uh, error before? No. No one has seen this in the... Really? Okay. So I, 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 I did, and I was like, okay, well, why, why is this happening, right? Okay, so um, I, I went through a lot of, lot of, of uh, websites and articles describing the situation, you know, to find out what was going on. And then I realized everything was on this page. Um, so if you want to switch off, you just need to remember, okay, Rails Guides has this page, and uh, everything you need to know is on that page. Okay, thank you, talk over. Okay, no, joking, never mind. Uh, so, we start with a short quiz. I have some Ruby code here. Can anyone tell me how many occurrences of a constant do you see here? I haven't counted myself, so let me count. Uh, Hmm. Okay. How many of you count five or less? Okay. You're wrong. How many of you count seven or less? Okay. Also wrong. Uh, how many of you count nine or more? Okay. Unless I counted wrongly, you're also wrong. Uh, so let's turn on the syntax highlighting, which we all like. Uh, everything yellow is an occurrence of a reference to a constant, right? Calendar is a constant. Event is a constant. Default duration is a constant. Max duration constant. Embeddable is a constant. Main event is a constant. Calendar and event, again, repeated, but an occurrence of a constant, right? So we see here a lot of ways to define a constant. When we define a class, we actually define a constant. Right? When we define a global variable, not global variable, gl variable at the top level namespace, starting with a capital letter, it's also a constant. When we define a module, the module name becomes a constant as well. Right? So it's sort of like a variable, right? A constant. A, a, a constant stores a reference to a value. So you distinguish between the constant name and the value, right? So a class can, uh, has a class name and the class itself. So if you didn't know, you can actually create a class in Ruby, declare a class in Ruby without giving it a class name. How you do this? You can type class, capital C, class dot new, enter open block, and then you define a class, but there's no constant that you have created to reference that class. So this is going to give you an idea of what constants are. OK. Uh, then the next question is, how does Ruby decide when you call a constant, when you reference a constant, what, what, what value are you talking about? Right. So that's what we mean by constant lookup in Ruby. Not, not like this. Ruby doesn't do this. It has no idea of, uh, well, anyway. So here, right, let's say in Rails, in the context of Rails, when you open a controller, Rails has to, Ruby has to interpret your controller file, right? So it goes to a route. The route references a controller action. It loads the controller, right? It says, okay, this is the controller file that de defines my controller. And then there are a bunch of uh, constants that are referenced here in this definition of a user's controller, right? So I reference application controller. I reference user. I reference page size and 
page size again. Right. So the question is, how does Ruby decide what these constants mean? Okay. And there is, a, there is an algorithm that Ruby implements, that follows, loosely speaking, um, that it uses to, dis to resolve the constant reference. The first step is to look at this thing called module nesting in order. So module nesting is an array. It looks up each element in this array, see whether that element defines this constant. If not, move to the next one. If it can't find in, in, uh, the, the definition of the constant in, in these elements, it will look in module.nesting.first.ancestors. So the ancestors of the first element in module.nesting. If you still can't find it, well, OK, let's look in object. OK. So when we look at, OK, there is a fourth thing. Right, I forgot about that. If all those three steps don't give you a constant reference, a reference to a constant, it calls constant missing on the first element in module.nesting. Right. And that's, that's where you get this name error thing when you, when you type a constant that you haven't defined anywhere in your code. OK? So this can be overridden. And I will get to that shortly. OK, so now we look back at this, the same controller I, with the resolution algorithm there. So module nesting is this thing can call in any context, in any scope. right? So I've given you what would look like the return values when you call these things in user's controller. If you call module.nesting in the user's controller, you would just get user's controller itself, the class. Or rather, the constant that references the class, to be precise. If you wanted to look up the ancestors of user's controller, you would get user's controller, application controller, right? because it inherits directly from application controller. Of course, Rails does something, so there's actually some stuff in between. And then after application controller, there's a bunch of other things, and then it reaches object eventually. right? Why does it reach object eventually? Because all classes inherit from object eventually. Right? So given this, okay, I reference a capital U user. Okay, We go through the process. I will look first in module.nesting, which is user's controller. Does user's controller define a user constant? This is the whole entire user controller definition declaration, there is no user constant defined. So I'll go next to the first dot ancestors, which means users controller and application controller and so on and so forth until object, right? Uh, when we do this with user, it will stop at object because object will define the constant capital U user, which is what we normally understand as uh, our user active record model. Uh, but in the event that, that you didn't define that model, it will go down next to try object. You can see the sort of, uh, it's, it's sort of duplicated here because we are in the context of a class. Right? But it will try to look at object. It will not find object because we didn't define it, let's say. And then it will raise constant missing. Okay? Same for page size. Page size will go through the same process. Okay? And so that means I can define page size either in the controller, right, or in the top level namespace, or in application controller, right, and it will work. Okay. So the big question should be this module nesting thing. Sounds a bit insidious. You need to call a method to understand where your constants are going to come from, right? It's, it's a bit weird. So. Core documentation, Ruby doc, tells you module defines a method called nesting, class method, where it tells you the list of modules nested at the point of call. So if I have two modules, M1 and M2, M2 nested in M1, I define a global variable dollar sign $A. Dollar sign means the variable becomes global. I can reference it outside the module. Module nesting I can see here is M1 double colon M2, which is the nested module M2, right? M1 double colon M2 is the nested module M2. And then the second item in module.nesting is M1. 
So if I wanted to reference a constant inside M2, there are two places I can define this constant, right? M1 double quote M2 or M1. But then if I define my M2 module like that on the right, right module.nesting just has M1 double colon M2, which means in that case, I will not be able to reference a constant defined in M1. This is strange a bit. It's not expected, right? But it is the way it is because Ruby, so this is the way it will work. Let's say I define a constant in M1. If I define, if I try to reference the constant M2 by opening the module M2 like this, I get the constant in M1. But if I to open the module M2 like that on the right, it will raise this dreaded name error thing because it can't find the C, the constant C. Yes. So enter all the debate about Rails conventions about Con, uh, namespacing conventions, whether we should use this uh, syntax or that syntax. I'm not getting to that, but anyway. Yes. Uh, so that's one piece of the puzzle, right? The next piece of the puzzle is, uh, well, we know we can reference constants by qualifying the constant, right? We use this double colon syntax. When I say, okay, this is just the same user's controller, except that I explicitly said I want to get the page size from this user constant, right? When Ruby is looking at this file, it doesn't know whether user is a class or a module, so it just knows that there's a constant, right, which contains, whatever the constant is referring to, contains another constant page size, okay? So how does Ruby interpret that? So there is another algorithm. Uh, the first step of this algorithm is to resolve the constraint on the leftmost first, what we call the qualifying constraint. First, I must know what a user is. If I type this statement, the Ruby has to figure out, OK, what you're referring to when you say the constant user. Yeah. So having that, I know my qualifying constant. I will now look inside my qualifying constant for the qualified constant, the, the one on the next right most, next right, in this case, account. Where will it look in the user? It will look in the user itself, as well as ancestors of the user, okay? And then this goes on and on until we're done with the whole qualification constant statement. So what does this mean? In the case of this, Okay, this is just the same controller. I have squished it to the right. If I wanted to resolve user double colon page size, I will first resolve user as Ruby. I will resolve user first. Having user, I will now look inside user for page size. So if user defines the constant page size, I will reference that value. If not, I will look into the ancestors of user which include object, right? And if all of those things don't define page size, then I will raise my name error, or rather call constant missing. Yes. Uh, so this is basically the thing that we want to look at when we want to figure out how is Ruby going to interpret user double colon page size. We look at the ancestors, and there's a bunch of ancestors because it's active record object, and then Having known that, we will know how Ruby will resolve page size. But what about something like this? Okay, let's, let's, let's take our thought experiment, right? This little thought experiment. We now know how to resolve qualified constant references. What if I gave Ruby this code? I define the user class. It doesn't inherit from anything. At least, I don't define anything that it inherits from. Um, and then I reference this constant, qualified constant, user double colon hash. How many of you think this will raise an error in the Ruby interpreter? A name error. OK. So exactly, it doesn't raise a name error. It raises the warning. It prints the warning, top level constant referenced by this qualified constant reference. Because object is in an ancestor of user. 
So for some reason, the top level constant hash, which we know because hash is defined in standard library, a uh, core library, um, user has access to this constant hash, right? Because we will look in the ancestors of user. So here's the thing. Every top level constant we ever define is actually contained inside this user, uh, this object, object, right? So when we say hash without any qualifying uh, constants in the top level namespace when you type Rails console, we are actually referring to object double colon hash, which can be shortened to just double colon hash. This is what we mean when we type double colon hash. A double colon hash is a short hand for object double colon hash, right? So that's this was the big thing that I had to wrap my head around because you didn't. I wouldn't have expected that uh, this top level thing that you define suddenly exists in this object thing. Also, this is obviously not what I intend to refer to if I type user double colon hash, right? If I type user double colon hash, if you read that to me, I would expect that someone defined a hash module or class inside the user module or class, and then I'm trying to reference that hash class or module. Here is like, that's, I'm saying that's what I want. Ruby clearly knows that's what I want, but it's just giving me the top level stuff. <sighs> Okay, so uh, going back to this idea, what is a Ruby constant, right? So you should now recognize that, firstly, this main event belongs to object, right? And so does calendar event belongs to object. So let me go back to this guy. So hash is in object. That's why user double colon hash works. It doesn't break your code. It's weird. Now, if I did this with a module, module mod, reference mod double colon hash, it doesn't work. This raises the name error. Why? Because module.ancestors doesn't work like class.ancestors. Modules ancestors don't have object. The fuck? <laughs> okay, so now we know how Ruby resolves constants here. Yeah. Let's talk about Rails. When does Rails need to resolve a constant? Does anyone know? I have an idea. You don't have to tell me, just yes or no. You don't have to describe the thing. Anyone? Nice. So you have seen that Rails guys page before. Right. Yes, so you, you know everything I'm going to talk about. <laughs> okay, so yes, so what happens is Rails autoloads your constants when Ruby can't find them. That means if Ruby can find them, Rails is not going to load your constant. Why should this matter? Well, we go into that website, section four. If you want to read this, you can read this. But basically, this particular section is saying, in production, we will load all your files into memory. But in development, we will not do this. We will be lazy. Only when we need to reference your class will we load the file that defines your class, OK? So in any way, even if we don't do that, even in production, even if we load the files eagerly, we will still do this auto-loading thing as we parse a file and we find constant that, constants that are referenced inside the file. Right? So I'm not going to introduce you to the, the, this section, the common gotcha section, the same page. This section forms a good third of the entire page. <coughs> Uh, of this whole, uh, you know, auto-loading, reloading stuff that is described by Rails, um, which brings to mind, you know, Solnik wrote an article about why Rails is, uh, he doesn't want to do Rails anymore. It reminds you about the auto-loading thing that's supposed to make things convenient for you, but you, you have these cases which it doesn't deal with the way you expect, and then you suddenly have to understand how the auto-loading works. So I'm just, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, but I want to go back to this idea, right? How does this manifest in a Rails project? Okay, let's, let's think about that. 
So let's say I just spun up my real server. Right? As I just said, everything is not loaded at the start. It's all lazy loaded. Right? So let's say I make a HTTP request using my browser that hits this controller action, admin logs controller index. Right? Then I will start loading this uh, admin logs controller. So it says admin double colon logs controller. Right? So okay, there's a constant admin there. Let's resolve that constant. So it will load admin, right? And then, okay, we have interpreted that line. We understand how to deal with this line. So the way this works is Ruby tries to find out what admin is. Ruby can't figure it out, right? It hits the constant missing method. And then because Rails overwrote the constant missing method, Rails adds its auto-loading logic into the constant missing method and gives you, loads the file that defines your admin method. This is why the naming of your files with respect to the classes that are defined in the files is very important, very strict in Rails. You cannot deviate from this because if you do, Rails cannot find the correct file that defines the thing that you're trying to reference. Right. So okay, let's move to the next line. We have admin log. Okay, let's look at this. Qualify constant. Okay. First thing, resolve admin. We already resolved admin. So we know Ruby will resolve this admin to correctly to admin. Then we look at log. Okay. Does admin define log? No. Admin does not define a log constant. Right? So having looked in the admin, we now look at the ancestors of admin. Right? Because this is the only thing that's loaded in memory in, in the real server, there is, no, there is no log anywhere. Right? So it reaches the constant missing method in Rails. And then Rails says, okay, you're trying to load this thing called the admin double colon log. I know where that file is, so I will load that file, and now we will have this class that you can use in your controller. Right? So this is all fine, this works. We don't have the top level constant reference error. Consider a separate case. For some reason, this was not the first HTTP request that our Rails server handled in development. We had another HTTP request we did because we were testing something else. There was a logs controller that we did, and it, in, it loaded the logs model into our memory. Right. OK, so we have log already. First line, same thing. We see admin, we resolve admin correctly. Next line, I have log. Log is in object. Admin doesn't have log, but admin is a, has object in his ancestor history hierarchy. So Rails, Ru not Rails, Rails doesn't even enter this picture. Ruby says, okay, admin doesn't have this constant. I look in the ancestors, there's object. Look in object, object has object log, because log is defined on the top level. So say, okay, I can resolve this. Ruby can resolve this. Rails' constant missing method never gets called. But Ruby knows that this is a tricky thing, so it will output this line in your server log saying, warning, top level constant log referenced by admin double colon log. So if you're not paying attention to your server logs, you would miss this completely. And you will wonder why in your view, where you're using admin logs, you're expecting this method to be defined in admin log. You can't call it because it says no method error. The method is not defined on your log. So this was the very error that I was trying to debug that led me down this whole rabbit hole of constant loading. And uh, it took me down, I think, pretty useful because you understand more about how Ruby, Ruby and Rails works. You understand that this top level thing is uh, actually object, capital O object. And then when you define a top level constant, it's on object. And then this weird behavior where class inherits from object, so if you try and reference a constant, you can type admin double colon string and you can actually uh, continue at infinitum. Admin double colon string, double colon hash, double colon any other default class that is defined on the top level namespace, right? And that would be completely unexpected behavior because that's not how we think when we write something like admin double colon log. So this is uh, the end of my talk. I'll just to say there is an issue logged in Ruby for this. 
because clearly Ruby knows about this, right? Uh, this guy said, okay, well, Ruby can't find this thing. There's this warning top level constant thing. And then the hope, the hope is that Mats saw this, uh, this thread and said, I like this proposal. Let's do this in 2.4. Okay. We'll wait for 2.4. Yeah. Okay, so just to, yes. 2.4, yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, references, that one website. No, actually, uh, I actually ended up looking at all these websites because that one website was the last one that I came to. I came to all these other websites and I saw, okay, everything that I was looking for is actually in that website. But sure, I mean, uh, great, you know. <laughs> okay, thanks for listening. Thank you. Require dependency, you can look this up, will resolve this issue. But then you have to remember that you have to include that thing in your <laughs> class definition. Uh, would it work if you change class admin to module admin? Yes. It will also work if you change class admin to module admin. If you don't need admin to be an active record object. Yeah, okay. So admin is an active record object? Yeah. Okay. Now it sounds strange. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. so, so that means admin log is a uh what do you call that? It's another activity. Yeah. No, but if you subclass it, it means oh, it's not subclass. It's not subclass. It's uh it's main space. So, oh, so, so this yes, so this came strange. about because uh, right. right. So this came about because of the idea of namespacing and models. Uh, which sounds like a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you ever dealt with a big Rails project, your model directory is huge. Right? You sort of namespace it sometimes, but, you, but by the name, by alphabetical. But you could namespace it with a module. Yes, you could. If you didn't need a main model. Okay, that's a good A main model and a namespace. So, yeah, there, there was, there's no way to resolve this. So, the other way to resolve this, and, but this was already built by the time I knew. You could have a account class. And say, you know, that's the account and the account has roles, one of the roles being an admin. And that's, the, that's actually what we're moving towards. Because, so, because I wouldn't have, if I just look at admin column to the log, I wouldn't have thought that admin is an active record object. Exactly, yeah. exactly. In fact, Ruby wouldn't have known either, you just look at that. So we'll try and resolve admin the constant name, and then we will say, okay, there's a class in here. Uh, class, classes inherit from modules, so they inherit their behavior. Uh, Yes. Okay. Um, does anyone have any more questions for? Um, so, behind the scenes, right, is Ruby um, actually hashing all these name constants to you know to make the, to increase the speed of the lookup or okay. or to make the thing more compact? I didn't look into that completely, thing, mm -hmm. but uh, modules have this collection of constants that the modules contain. Yeah. Um, so there is a, it's sort of, it knows what it owns, but it's not cached on the level like 
Admin log control will not cache the value of admin logs. Admin log. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Okay. Because I know Python does it. Right. So every every keyword you use, huh, they actually hash the thing so you can you look it up in the dictionary. Right, right. So that makes the code more compact and then it's super faster. Yeah. So I don't know if Ruby does that. Yeah, yeah, Ruby does that. Every module has this table of content. You mentioned that it might change the constant uh, top level lookup in 2.4, and 2.4 is supposed to be released in a month because it's always our business. Do you know if it was if it was finally accepted or if it caused too many problems? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone have any more questions for William? Um, if not, uh, thank you, William.